For this next story of the year is 1733, George in Newcastle. Now, a lot of people ask me, when we're thinking about early periods of history, what people did for entertainment before TV, before YouTube, and the answer is that they had plenty to do, as well as the usual standbys of gin and syphilis, which were all over the place in Georgian England. There were plenty of other things that could enter to keep people entertained as well. They could go to the theatre. The Moot Hall in the Castle Garth was often used for showing plays, most of which featured bloody murders, or songs, or a nice mixture of both. But there were also plenty of acrobats and live performers in the streets, and it's one of these live performances that we're going to be talking about today. Now in 1733, the cry went round the town that a flying man had arrived. Now, you thought the Wright brothers invented powered flight in 1905, and I suppose in a way you'd be right, but flying men were a very common form of entertainment. Basically what you do is attach a rope to some high place, and then one to the ground, and then through some kind of contraption of your own devising, shoot down the rope to the great delight of all of the people down below, who would clap and cheer if you survived, and probably clap and cheer if you didn't. In fact, one of the most common things uh, you hear about flying men in the records um, is their untimely and grisly deaths. On this case, however, the flying man survived, so you can be happy that this story has uh, a reasonable ending, at least. Now, on this occasion in 1733, the flying man climbed to the roof of the keep, and there he set up his rope. It was dropped to the ground. It was pulled taut by a winch. And then, to the great delight of everyone watching, the flying man went shooting down to the ground. And, you know, this was all well and good. But uh, a great many towns had had flying men visit them. This flying man had something quite new to entertain the crowds. Because once he had gone down a few times, he decided that the next phase of this entertainment was to send a donkey down. Now, this might sound crazy to you or me, but then we don't drink bathtub gin for a penny a cup. So uh, somehow they contrived to get the donkey up the stairs of the castle keep and onto the roof. There the rope and other contraptions were still set up. Um, what kind of contraption they used to attach the donkey onto the rope, um, the newspapers of the time don't tell us. What they do tell us is that the donkey shot down with great speed, with lead weights tied onto its legs in order to prevent them from waving around in every direction. However, on this occasion, uh, the danger was not from the donkey's legs waving around, but from the crowds, who the newspapers tell us did not get out of the way in a timely fashion. And the donkey crashed into the great crowd of people watching, um, actually crushing one of them to death and injuring several others. And it's one of these strange stories that I often tell when I'm up on the roof of the castle giving tours. And it's funny how many times it elicits a laugh. And it just goes to show that really, a few hundred years is probably the difference between tragedy and comedy.